Okay, no problem. Let's go to Miss, uh, Miss Sanya. Miss Sanya, can you unmute yourself and just tell us a little bit about yourself and if you're working or what you would like to learn from this webinar today and which cash level are you interested in? Hello, how are you all? Yeah. All good. Yeah, I'm doing uh, cash too in MNR and I'm housewife, I'm not doing anything now. Actually, I'm graduated with BA. You know the criteria to work here. Yes. Uh, BA or cash course. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. so do you want to do cash level three after your level two? Yeah. Okay, sure. that's perfect. Okay, can we have somebody else? Uh, can I have Miss Joanne? Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, hi everybody. Hope you're all well and safe. Um, I'm currently working but unpaid at a nursery in JLT. I've been there for five years. Um, I'm teaching two to three year old children, which you know is a difficult age. Yes. <laughs> um, also, I'm actually doing a little bit of online learning with a few of my students as well. So it's helping a little bit to get the food and pay the bills. What else can I do? That's great, that's great. Okay, all right. So um, anybody else who'd like to share? Can I have Miss, uh, Miss Janu, do you wanna share something? Uh, hi everyone. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, yes, just like Joanne also was teaching in the nursery and uh, once again unpaid, so which is a very sad situation. Uh, what I wanted to know is that with cash, once again, we don't know whether nurseries are going to open or not. And it doesn't look like they will open, even if Corona does dissipate for at least another year. So oh with the cash, with the cash, do you think we could get into primary schools or something? Um, so, okay, all right. So I'm gonna talk about all those things today, okay? And you know, we'll, we'll discuss everything and I'll, I'll take up all your questions regarding the cash programs, okay? And um, so I'm just gonna dive in and then I think I'll start. Um, it's already 3.10, so I think whoever is here, it's fine, we'll just start. And uh, it's a great question that you asked. I will be talking about that as well today. So I'm just, uh, first, I would just like to uh, share my screen and I'd just like to show you something. Um, okay. Hello, Ms. Madhima. Sorry, I'm late. Sorry. No problem. No problem. Okay, I'm going to start. Okay. All right. Okay. So can you all see the screen? Yeah. Yeah, okay, yes, all right. Yes, yes. All right, so let me just start by introducing myself. So I'm Madhima Gandhi. I am the cash center manager at MNR TSDI, and I manage all the cash programs, and I've been in the field for cash managing field for about two years now. And uh, before that, I was in early years for about four years, and I myself was a nursery teacher and then a nursery manager. And I have completed my cash level three, my cash level five, and my assessor's qualification. So I have had a good number of years of experience in this field. Okay, so I'm gonna start, I'm just gonna introduce the company to you. So we are MNR and uh, <clears throat> it started in Dubai in, uh, in 2015, we started in September. And uh, we are actually a very big education trust back in India. So we've always been in education field itself. And, um, and you know, our chairman's, uh, you know, goal or his key term, you know, which he always tells everybody is to be a lifelong learner. And that was his dream. And that's why he got into the whole education industry. So we have about four engineering colleges in India. We have like four hospitals and, you know, medical colleges in India. And we have... Uh, we have 22 nurseries in Mumbai and Hyderabad and uh, Hyderabad is where our head office is and um, we do many more qualifications like ITJ anybody who want is interested in getting to the medical field or engineering field we help them with the entrance exams and in Sharjah we are opening a, a new school in uh, it's from KG from FS1 up until grade four, up until the primary section. That's the first project, the phase one of the project, which will be launching soon. So it's already built. 
it had to start this September. So let's see now how the whole situation with Corona is. And mm. then I think uh, we'll start. Okay, so moving further, I just want to tell you what cash is and why it is so important for um, us living in UAE to, you know, to do cash programs. So cash is basically uh, the ministry of, it's, it's under the hotel, uh, in uh, back in and then after that, when it came to UAE, it, we also fall under the Ministry of Healthcare. So cash, actually the program that cash offers, it, it, is, it, it marks and ticks all the boxes of the healthcare industry as well as the teaching and early years industry. Okay, and that's why cash has been recognized as a general, you know, the, the passing criteria for you to be a teacher now. For you to be a teacher between the age age group of children from zero up until seven years of age, mm -hmm. you should be doing cash qualifications. So if you want to get into primary schools, so FS1, FS2 would be if you want to get into that profession, you would need to do F, uh, you would need to do cash. Now, saying that not all CBSC schools, okay, I don't want to lie to anybody and say that, oh, you know, you do cash, you will get a job everywhere. If you are specifically applying to CBSC schools, not all CBSC schools still fall under this, you know, under this rule of KHTA. They still take teachers who are just B ed. But if you want to apply to any IGCSE schools, any IB schools, or just want to keep your options completely open, then you must do cash program because CBSC schools also con consider cash programs. They do but not all of them will. I cannot speak for all of them. And in UAE, schools are given freedom to choose what education level of teachers they want to do or they want to have in their you know, staff. So that's why we will never actually have it. I will never have a definite answer for you if you ask me, can I get a job in any school? I cannot say any school, but I can say 80% of the schools, yes, you can, because they fall under the KHDA rule and they ha they are following it but still there are some cbsc schools who are very strict about following only the indian curriculum they will not follow this you know they will just go with b ed okay <clears throat> but if you don't have a b ed and if you do cash instead and you have a few number of years of experience in early years then definitely you are eligible to apply to those schools as well because they do hire teachers. And I personally know many teachers who have been hired in CBSC schools just by doing cash and having like four or five years of experience as well. Okay. I just interrupt you there. What about if you've got over 20 years experience? How does that help? Well, it, it really helps. But again, they're not qualification, which is recognized by the KHDA just to tick you off and put you on their employment list. Because without a qualification, they're not allowed to leave. They, they would love to have you, I'm sure. 20 years of experience is marvelous. They would love to, but they just can't because of KHDA regulations. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. So if you just tick any one of the boxes, you know, like either B ed or like cash or any level of cash as well, then definitely they will hire you. Okay, okay, thank you. All right, so cash before it was a part of Ministry of Health. Um, the National Nursery Examination Board in UK, and then it became so widely known and so you know recognized for its quality in teaching that so it became a whole brand in itself. So, but it still falls under the Ministry of Health in UK and as well as UAE. Okay, all right. So, <clears throat> I just want to tell you about all the different kinds of level that there are in cash. So there is level one, which is an introduction to caring for children and young people. This is very suitable for you if you are interested to work in, in babysitting firms or if you want to be a nanny for any child. And, and this is a very short program. It's only a 24 uh, hour program. So it gets over in about like four classes. Okay, so uh, this is also mainly if you don't know what you want to do and you're not sure if you want to get into early years, level one would be a good, uh, you know, good, good thing for you to do if you want to just get an idea of what, you know, studying with cash is all about. Okay, then you Can have to your... interrupt you again. Sorry, these 24 hour like four class cars, is this, can you do this online and is it also free? It's not free. Okay. It's not, 
it's not free. There are there are prices for everything. I'll tell you the prices all towards the end. Okay. okay. Uh, but it is a very minimal amount. Like if you compare it with other levels of cash, it's a very minimal amount. It's like an introduction. That's it. And the 24 hours we divide it in four classes. So we have like, um, like we'll have like maybe four weekends we'll teach you or maybe we'll teach you in within one week itself we can complete the program it really okay. depends on the group and level one is always taught in big groups because it has a lot to do with um with group activities so it's mm -hmm. a lot like you'll be creating crafts together you'll be doing practical work together so you know it's a lot of you a lot to do with engaging with other learners as well as young children how you will engage with them and it's very practical based as well so it's really it's really fun to do level one. Then you have level two, which is suitable if you want to work under supervision. That basically means if you are interested to be a teaching assistant. OK, so you can be a teaching assistant with level two in any school. Uh, like I know most of the schools are accepting level two as teaching assistants. OK, and uh, and obviously every nursery in UAE will accept level two as teaching assistant. OK, so. Um, it, it means that you will be working under the supervision of the actual teacher, the homeroom teacher present in the class at that moment. Okay, and very sometimes you would be stepping in for the teacher as well if you know you've been there for a while. So they and sometimes I've seen level two teachers being full time teachers as well, not just you know level three even level two teachers are given full classrooms but that usually i've seen that happen in uh, small nurseries you know where there is less staff and it's like a very informal setting i've seen that happening and that's all that's legal absolutely legal okay then there is level three which is a proper diploma so level two is just for four months okay and level three is a full one year program and it is suitable if you want to work without any supervision. So the only person you would be reporting to for level three would be the nursery manager or, you know, the head of department if you're in a school. So level three is a full one year program. It, it is quite intensive. So I always tell everybody to prepare themselves mentally. If you want to start level three, it is quite intensive. Some people think level five would be intensive, but level five is comparatively still easier than level three because level three is all about actually dealing with a child on a one on one basis and actually, you know, learning about what what, you know, sleep patterns will affect how it will affect their moods, learning about what kind of food they should be eating, learning about their medical emergency process, learning about every single thing to do in in relation with the child okay so uh, level three is if you want to be a teacher in uae so as you know khd has made it a legal requirement if you want to work as early as teacher or from zero to seven years of teacher in a nursery you have to have cash there is no other qualification required it's just cash but for a school as i said before some schools will fall under this rule some schools might not okay then okay. level five okay is if you want to get into the background of this whole thing, like if you want to get into the leadership and management side of this whole education system, the EYFS. So it is, it is suitable for you if you are already a nursery manager or if you want to be one, or if you are maybe, you know, the, the assistant head of department in your school, then this would, you know, make you the head department, head of department. So this is again a one year program. It is also very intensive and um, it has a lot to do with you not directly dealing with the children, but at the end of the whole study of level five, it will all be about how the whole study will benefit the child in the end. Okay, but you will be working with your teachers and it will be all about you training them and you, you know, motivating them and being a good team member and how you can be a great manager. It will be all about that. Okay, so I'll explain it in detail. But before I just want to tell you about MNR and our team. So I'm at I'm at the center, so I'll be the I'm the center manager, Madima, and then we have our IQAs. Now IQAs are the internal quality assurance officers, which are assigned for each center. When I, you know, take you on as a student, I will be training you and I will be giving you some assessments and you have to answer them and you will be uploading it to them on your portfolio and all that stuff. 
after all that stuff is over, the IQA will be looking at your assignments and your portfolios, making sure that you are following the cash guidelines and answering them and making sure that the training that you're getting from MNR is up to the mark. So they really are like an auditor for us as well as you. Okay, so they give their comments here or there. Every month we get some feedback from them and then we share it with the students. Then we have your assessors. Assessors, we have about, like we have about four assessors on board, which is a lot for one center. So we have uh, Miss Nevena. She will be speaking to you guys today as well. She will be joining us in the last uh, 15 minutes of the session. And she will talk about what she looks for in a cash student's assignments, okay? What exactly she needs from you or what exactly you are expected to do if you're a cash student and how intensive it is or how easy it is and how, you know, you can, you can organize yourself to go through this qualification, okay? Then we have your trainers. <clears throat> we have uh, amazing trainers at MNR and uh, I myself am one of the trainers and I train at the main branch, Bardubai branch. And um, for now, we are all training online, but uh, we have, I'm at Bardubai branch. Then we have Miss Mahmuda, she trains at Al Nahda branch. She's also great. And she's also cleared her, uh, her qualification of assessing as well as cash level five. So every trainer of ours themselves is a cash level three and level five graduate. Only then we let them be trainers with us. Then we have our accountant, Mr. Varun, who goes through all the payments and everything. Any doubts you have regarding payments, you can contact him. And I know you guys have already been introduced to either Rochel or Saida or Rupali for you know, getting in touch for today's seminar. Okay, and our laser director, laser is the online system or the online platform that we use, which is like a connection between us and cash, and it's all connected through laser. So that's where you submit all your assignments, that's where you submit all your you know, assessments, your doubts, your all the conversations that you have with the assessor is all on laser, okay? So uh, the contact information for the center is already over here if you wanna take it down. And even Rocha's email ID is written. And my email ID is cash training at mnrtsdi.ae. I have written it down over here. If you wanna ask me anything personal, or if you want to just, you know, have and you have any more doubts you want to clear even after the session, please feel free to email. Okay? okay. All right. So I will just tell you a little bit about what your assessor will do. It is it is very important that you have a very good relation with your assessor and that you always try to introduce yourself to your assessor, even though you won't necessarily meet them every time. I try, we try our best to have the assessor sometimes to visit you, but you know, mostly it, it's very difficult because sometimes you are busy and the assessor is busy or it just never really, you know, comes all together. And um, some of you might never get the chance to meet them. You'll only be speaking to them on laser and they'll be reviewing your homeworks and assignments. And we as trainers, like an MNR, we meet the assessor like every week and we have like a, a meeting, a face and we go through each student's you know, progress and what they're doing, how they're doing, what I would like you to tell this student, or please tell this student to upload this way, that way, whatever it is, they tell us and then we tell you, okay? So you will only be meeting your trainers, but very rarely you'll be meeting your assessor, but basically what your assessor will do is they will work with you on your whole qualification and really they are there to help you and support you. And uh, they make judgment on the, you know, your knowledge and your understanding skills. And if they feel that, you know, there is a question and I know, I, and she can read it and she can see that, you know, I know that, you know, maybe Joanne ha has understood this question. It's just that she didn't word it as well as it's required by cash. And so she will immediately call me and then she tells me that, you know, can you please speak to her and tell her, just give her like a sample or explain to her in the next class and how she's supposed to upload. So, you know, she also gives you, the assessor also gives you the feedback on laser itself. So that always is very self-explanatory and she tries her best to be as, you know, as, um, uh, as detailed as possible 
but sometimes you know you might get confused reading her comments you can get back to us and obviously i have a i have a, like the access to all your uh, assignments and all your comments and all the conversation you've been having with the assessor so i know that you know it all goes through me so i know what is being happening in each portfolio and so they give you feedback on each and every question and each and every work plan and assignment that you submit it is required by cash to give you feedback if um I don't know if some of you are studying in other centers or um, you know in UAE itself. I know that there are some centers who are who where you submit your assignments and you are not given any sort of feedback. That is not allowed from Cash. Cash is like a two-way street. Cash believes in a student receiving equal feedback and the trainer giving them proper feedback, and everything is recorded. That's why we use an online portal given by them, which is Laser. So they can also have an access to every communication that has happened between the learner and the trainer and the assessor. And you know, if the learner has been treated fairly and if they have been supported to the best of the assessor's ability. So sometimes I know some centers, they are not giving any feedback uh, by the assessor to the learner. Please, you know, please avoid such centers because uh, that is not the way cash is supposed to run. And if your qualification is to be tracked, you know, back and, you know, assessed for quality, it might be rejected by in the end. So please make sure wherever you are studying your cash qualification that you are actually observed, that your assessor gives you feedback on each and every question and that, you know, you respond to that feedback as well. So this whole cycle has to happen. Okay? Okay. So just to tell you a little bit about CASH Level 2, I'll talk about Level 2, Level 3, Level 5, because I know uh, most of you are here for these levels. So uh, for Level 2, we have about five units that we cover. And Level 2 is also, it's pretty simple as well. And this can be definitely done online because this does not require you to be observed in person at all. Okay, and this does not require you to submit any, do any observations on any child. It doesn't. So this can really be done online and it's, it's a very short course. It's only about four months. I know students who have finished it in two months as well. So it is really up to you. It's self-paced. So um, if we talk about young children's development, where you will be explained about how and at what rate and age, you know, in the first three years, especially the development happens and at what speed it happens. Then we talk about the value of play that you have in young children. So we'll talk about why play is so important and what value it holds in a child's life and how you can teach them to play. Then we'll talk about craft activities. In level two, we really give you like a lot of activities and hands-on and practical things to work on. So it's a lot of, uh, you know, we'll give you real examples of craft activities you can do with children at different ages. We'll show you some videos. It will be very interactive class. And then there's, there's a very big unit for safeguarding. This is also common in level three because level three, of course, has more detailed version of it. But level two also talks about the welfare and safeguarding and child protection in early years because as you know it is a legal requirement by KHTA and also Ministry of Education for you to have some sort of training in safeguarding and child protection and then the last part we'll talk about we'll wrap up the whole course with the importance of play because play is such a big part of EYFS it has been really you know given a lot of importance and we'll talk about why you need to understand that play is so important and how you will implement it in your daily activities with the children okay then uh, I'll sorry to interrupt you dear uh, but yes. i just wanted to know that level two what you talked about is yeah. like okay for for now it's like online course right so is it a theory base or it will be a face-to-face -face session every day online no How it will be face-to-face no, it will be a face-to-face -face session online, definitely. So it's, like, like, it's like instead of going to the institute, we'll be online yes. every day. Yes, and we'll exactly. be facing each other and yes. having the classes, right? Exactly. I hope exactly. it's not theory-based because normally some people like my, like me, I'm talking about my own self, I don't like theory-based. Like it's, if it is that, that you are going to send me the uh, the theory and then I have to do sit and do it by myself, that's a little boring part for me. No, so no, I really see. like uh, the face to face yeah. if it's that the way. No, every week you'll have classes. So you will have classes for five weeks, okay? Because there are five units. So we have five classes. And after every class, you will get an assignment. 
of whatever we have spoken about in the class. So for example, if I'm doing the first unit today, then today evening you'll get the assignment for the first unit and then you must answer that. Okay, if you have any doubts, obviously you're supposed to email us. Okay, email me. Uh, email is the fastest way you can get in touch with me because I'm always on my email. So you can email me and then, you know, I can answer your doubts. But um, as you do one or two assignments, you get very used to it and you understand what exactly the assessment is from you. And then um, that's it. So that's how it works. There is one class and then one assignment. And then again, one class, one assignment. That's how. Okay. Okay. So it's an online, online course, of course, but it's face to face. You mean to It's say. always face to face, real time. Like, okay. And we don't even record anything and keep like, because, you know, it has to be, so uh, it's, it's not like I'll, I'll only be speaking in the class. You will be participating and there will be activities we will do even online. You know, as much as we can do, I'm trying to do activities, but we, it has to be an interactive session. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, then level three. Level three is the, you know, it's the mother load. It's the most intensive one that I have. So that is four themes, okay? And in, in each theme, uh, the first theme is all about the child's personal routine care and health and well-being and everything. It has about five units in it. We'll talk about the child's emotional well-being, you know, if they're unwell, how will we support them? What are the kinds of sickness that children might face uh, in the first seven years of their life? What about food, nutrition, everything about from physical till mental, everything we speak about in the first theme. Then theme two is a lot to do with the law and the legislations in early years for you to understand what is the meaning of child protection, what is safeguarding, what is, uh, you know, health and safety, and what are the UAE laws as well as the UK laws, because this is a UK qualification, you must mention UK laws as well, and how we work in partnership with parents and educate them about this law. So this will be, this is four units, very intensive units, just talking about the laws and legislations. Then you have 13 units, which is the biggest theme. It's play development and learning for school readiness. This is theme three. And in this, we talk a lot about the importance of play, the value of play, how will you use play and the environment of the classroom to enable children to learn, how you support math skills, literacy skills, you know, and all the seven areas of development that EYFS focuses on. And in this also, you will be given a big study to do, which is like your final project for level three, which is called the longitudinal study, where you will take one child and practically you will be observing it. You will be taking one child and then you will be observing them for, you know, for a span of about six to eight weeks. And you will be doing various activities with the child, recording those observations. And then you will be doing a whole evaluation on how you plan these activities, how it supported them. Okay, what happened? Hello. Hello. Uh, I think, uh, okay, it's a problem from their side, okay. Yes, yes, I do. From I side. thought something went wrong with my sister. Yeah, I thought the same thing, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's wait for her. Yeah. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry yes. about that. Yeah. I think it just got locked out for some reason. Okay. All right. 
So as I was saying, theme three is all about play and using your environment to help and support the children in your classroom. We'll talk about the seven areas, especially of learning in EYFS. And also we'll talk in detail about how to support children with additional needs in uh, early years. Okay, and then you'll also be doing a longitudinal study, which is a very intensive project of CASH Level 3. In CASH Level 3, as well as Level 5, there are projects for you to do. So you'll be talking about, you'll be talking about them in detail as well in CASH Level 3. Then the last theme is professional development. It is a lot to do uh, with the, okay, my screen is not shared. Sorry, guys. I just share it again. Okay, I, I think you all can see it now. Okay. okay. All right. So the last theme is uh, professional development, which has one unit, and it talks about what, how theoretical perspectives are in relation to your professional de development and how, as a teacher yourself, you should be doing continuous professional development for you to excel in your career even further, something that you all are doing today. You know, like how you're doing this, uh, attending this session, it's a version of uh, professional development and effort that you're doing in order to, you know, increase your chances of having a better career. So for cash level three, as I said, it is very intensive. So be prepared that there are a lot of hours that you must put in. And um, it's when I say it is intensive, it's not difficult. It's just it takes a dedication from your end and our end for you to get through this qualification. So you must put in, you know, a few number of hours and it is compulsory in cash level three that you work for 350 hours in an actual nursery. Okay, and these hours are divided into this age group. So zero to two years of age, you should be giving 25 hours at your workplace. From two to three years of age, you should do 133 hours. From three to five years of age, you should do 192 hours of practical work. It is compulsory for you to get your qualification. Okay, so I know that some of you are already working in maybe a specific age group and you cannot work in another age group or you know transfer yourself to another age group in your nursery. What we advise is in your whole qualification, you have about two to three months, which are you know holidays. So you'll have your summer vacation or you know, you'll have your uh, time off, your spring vacation. We advise you to use them to volunteer in other nurseries to complete your hours. So what we do is when you register with us, we give you like a letter saying that, you know, the student is doing this qualification with us where she, she is required to be observed or, you know, to work so and so hours in a specific age group. And then you take that letter and you will be allowed to volunteer in nurseries. So all of our students currently, they are working well as they are volunteering in other nurseries. Most of my students, what they do is they work their normal you know, hours in their normal uh, nursery, wherever they are working. And then after that, they spend around one or two hours a day in another daycare or another nursery, just volunteering and helping them out for another age group. Okay, so that is something that you could do. That is that is how I myself did my hours as well. I was an FS2 teacher in Gems Wellington. And then I would go every day for three hours after my school to Little Gems in Bersha and I would go and volunteer over there. So that's how I finish my hours as well. And that is something you will have to do. That's why I say that, you know, it is a little intensive because you will have to put in work. And 350 hours is about three months of you doing work. So three to four months, it will take you to finish these hours, okay? So don't worry mm -hmm. about it. And then what we do is in MNR, I, I cannot promise you now, but before what we've done is we've given volunteering ship to uh, some of our students who could not find it themselves at all. And we help them to get volunteering in, um, we have contacts with about three to four nurseries. And, um, but now due to Corona issue, uh, some of our contacts won't be operating anymore. So we will have very less contacts now, but we will be making new ones as well. So hopefully we'll be able to help you. But generally when you start your cash level three, nurseries take you on as volunteers and as supporters because you're already studying the course. So they don't, they don't think that it's you know, harmful to keep the children with you because you're legally already studying to be a teacher. Okay. All right. 
So level five, now let's get into level five. Level five has about 18 topics, okay? And there are no themes, there are no, uh, you know, breakdowns in level five because level five in each topic in itself is like a whole complete, um, you know, short course, okay? So uh, sometimes what happens, I know, I know many of my students who could not complete the whole level five, uh, cash gives you, you know, core unit certificates as well. So for example, some of my students did only 10 units. So they got 10 certificates of cash. It's like CPD certificates they got based on the units that they did. Okay, so it's like a full qualification or full like short course in itself in level five because it's so much into detail. So uh, level five talks a lot about promoting communication between parents and children and management. It talks about diversity and equality. It's a huge part of cash level five. It also talks about health and safety, just like cash level three. It is again, a huge part of cash five as well. Then it talks about um, how you understand how that each child develops in a different rate. And at a different level and how and what are the areas of development that the child has to have and then how will you motivate the teachers to help the children achieve those milestones okay so there are 18 units okay and then it talks it's it will talk a lot about partnership working as well and it will talk about supervising your teachers while they're doing practice okay it talks about leading uh, well-being and resilience in children a uh, joy and for you for example level five would be a really great addition to your career like i believe like because you have such a wide you know uh, experience and so many years under your belt already you could definitely opt for level five straight away but if you yeah, if you sure. have yeah, but if you generally like if if teachers have only one or two years of experience, then we always tell them start with level three and then you do level five. So uh, if you have a huge like, you know, like 20 years is too much. So if you have something like that, definitely you are eligible for level five. And then uh, the only thing that you need to you need to make sure while you're doing level five is that in order for us to get approval for you to start your level five, you have to show some evidence that you are supporting the management or you're working with the management of wherever you know you're working. So generally we ask you for a letter from your manager or from your immediate supervisor, just which says that yes, you know, she supports me in my daily activities or she helps me to maybe design the curriculum of the nursery or whatever, something to, to do with the management. So if we get a letter like that, then that's perfect. So, um, and, and then in, in level five, we also talk about everything we talk about in level three, but just in a little bit of detail and in, in through the eye of a manager, okay? So it talks about how you will supervise uh, teachers when they're giving literacy activities and what, um, you, know, you will actually go and supervise one of the teacher. You will actually write a report on that. And then you will actually give her feedback, which you will record and you will show to us. Or we might see you doing that in the nursery. So all these things are there that you will do in level five. In level five also, another thing you will do is you will do a staff appraisal. So this is a really good opportunity for you to help the manager, whoever is managing the nursery at that time. You can tell her that, you know, anyways, for my level five assignments, I'm going to be doing all these things. So why not I just do it actually for you and help you out? So generally, I don't think any manager will say no to, you know, free help. So generally, everybody agrees. So you can do a staff appraisal and you'll have to record it. So all these official things will need to be done in level five. Okay, now assessment criteria for all the levels, okay, is you should always be working. Work placement is very important, especially, especially in cash level three and level five, because it is a requirement from cash that you are working somewhere. Okay, then you might, we will have uh, then another um, method that we assess you on is obviously your academic writing. It's those assignments that I told you that after the classes, you will get assignments and you must answer them. Then another way that we assess you is we have profession discussion. Now, this is only relevant for cash level three, level five. Okay, 
So this is a professional discussion. It's basically, uh, we have a few questions and we have, uh, it's like a small interview that we do with the student, the candidate, and we record it, okay? And we just wanna get an idea of how the student is doing in this qualification and how well they're coping up and do they actually do understand the concepts that they're writing about in their answers, okay? It's just like a small interview, just like a small discussion. Then you have your longitudinal study. Longitudinal study is only for level three, which is, of course, you will observe, you will assess, and you will plan for one single child's needs and in any one area of development, okay? So there are seven areas of development, which I will tell you about as well. And out of that, you must choose any one area in which you will support one child. And then you, in the end, you will write a whole critical evaluation saying how this study or this observation that you did benefited the child. Okay, so that's all about longitudinal study. Then in level five, I, it's not mentioned over here, but in level five, the main project is called the research project, okay? wherein you will take one topic, um, any one topic, and I really believe to take one topic which is really close to your heart and uh, do a very intensive research on it. So that research means that you will take that, for example, I'll tell you, if you take a topic for um, maybe parent communication in nurseries, you think that parents are not really involved in a child's you know, life or in the child's learning journey in the nursery. And you would really like that to change. So take that as a topic and then you will speak to your manager, you will speak to your colleagues, you will speak to maybe other nurseries in the market and you will try to get an idea of how their parent communication is. How much do their parents actually participate in the class? And then you will come up with like a nice uh, little graph or a nice little, you know, um, uh, answer saying that you know after doing so much research with so many people involved i think that parent communication is not as much as it should be and it is only 30 percent or 40 percent or whatever it is and then you know you will give actual recommendations to the government or to the nursery where you are working at to improve parent communication and actual policies you will give them okay so it is like really making a change and giving a solution to that change because now you're at level five, you're at the highest level of cash. So you should be in a position to give change. I did my uh, research on obesity, childhood obesity, and how it has increased 30% and it increases around 30, 35% every year. So I went around and I, I took three nurseries and I did a, a survey with the teachers. There were about 30 teachers, there were three nurses, there were three managers, and there were about 300 children who I covered in that research. And then I made a nice, you know, uh, deduct, deduce, I deduced uh, the answer from the research that 30 to 35 percent of hype is there every year in obesity. And then I came up with something where I said that, you know, in the EYFS, physical is just named as an aspect, but it's not really physical activity is not really taken into serious consideration when the, when the teachers are making their remarks on the reports, but this should be a part of the reports that the teachers write. It should be also in physical education and all that stuff. So I, I made some recommendations to nurseries. I made some recommendations. I wrote some policies, and that is something you'll have to do in level five in your research project. Then uh, the, whenever you finish all these, um, you know, your academic writing, your profession discussion, your studies, your research, everything goes up on laser and all together that becomes your portfolio of evidence. That portfolio of evidence goes to cash in the end, you know, for the IQA process and the IQA goes through it one by one by one and she sees the quality of your, you know, answers, of your submissions, of your research, of your study, and then she will finally give us an answer that, you know, I would like the student to, she has done very well and I'm going to, you know, sign her off and she's going to get her certificate. Or sometimes they tell us that, you know, I would like to see this student give a little more evidence on her practical experience, or I want to see her give a little more evidence on this question number or that question number, whatever. They can never fail you. That never happens in cash. Okay. So you will never ever not end up getting a certificate. You will 
sometimes it's just that the IQA may say that, you know, please tell her to resubmit this question or that question because they just want to see a little more evidence and maybe it's not up to the cash standard and that's why they'll ask you to do that, okay? And another good thing is, um, that all the assignments, they are all, you know, assessed with the same level. Even cash level two will be assessed at the same quality as cash level three and cash level four, cash level five, all the levels together. There is no less or more quality, you know, it is, there is one standard set by cash and that's all that we need to follow, okay? So whenever you, you register for a qualification or you know you start the course with us, we give you a document which is called qualification specific, okay? That qualification specific has all the standards given to you, how the questions should be answered by you, how you know you should be explained these questions in the in the classroom if you are not explained you can come back to me and you can say you know what i don't think you explained this question very well can you please go with, go over it again and you know we are that's why we are here we are here to help you okay we are here to help you meet the cash standard okay so uh, in the qualification specific for each unit of your degree, you will be given the criteria that you must know in, these, in this qualification or in this unit and only then can you pass this unit. Okay, so all those things are given to you, all the criteria are given to you, everything that you need to do is really all given to you, including all the answering templates and all the activity templates and all the uh, research uh, study template, longitudinal study template, everything you must know, it's already given to you as soon as you register. We give it to you very early because we want you to go through it, to read it, and then you come back to us and you ask us all the questions. And also in your class, even if you don't go through it, in the classroom, if you just follow everything that your trainer tells you to do, you, you, you're already on the right track, okay? So don't worry or don't get overwhelmed by all the reading that we give you. That's just for you to have. But in the classroom, it's very important that you guys, you know, you ask us all your doubts and you voice all your opinions and help us improve as well. And you yourself keep improving as well. Okay, so all the, all the assessments which are done in cash are always um, at the scale of one to four. Okay, there is no mark which is above four. So four is the maximum that you get. And uh, the summative assessment is always passed. There is no fail. There is no, uh, no, no problem. Like, you know, nobody gets left behind. Everybody always passes, okay? It's just that it might take somebody six months or somebody eight months or somebody 12 months, but in the end, everybody gets there, okay? So I wanna, um, I just wanna check if our assessor is here. Um, Yes, our assessor is here, Ms. Nevena, uh, and she would like to speak to you a little bit about uh, what to expect from an assessor when you do start a qualification with us. So, Ms. Nevena, do you want to, yes. Yes, hi, how are you? Hi, everyone, it's lovely to be here with you. Hi. My name is Nevena, hi. Um, hi. I've been an assessor uh, for level two, level three, level five in the last couple of years. I went through courses myself. So I know very well what the criteria is and what you can uh, expect. So um, what I wanted to tell you, first of all, is uh, like Maddie said, there is no, uh, I fail on the course. Uh, it's just your progress. So I always, I know where is the capacity of students when it comes to their written work and their practical observations. So there is always a feedback that you're going to receive. Um, I believe Maggie explained you that there is a laser system, which is online system where you upload your portfolio. So I would check uh, regularly uh, your work. And then you got, so let's say you do one unit. The recommendation is that within two weeks you do the homework. Because what happens with students is that they pile up the work in the first four or five months. And then they have 10 units they need to do and they don't realize that this is not a course where you can fail, but it's a course that requires a lot of your time. So it's really a written work and uh, it takes time. You need to research, you have one book, you need to read an articles and then write in your own words. So it takes, let's say for a homework, maybe it depends if you're working. Um, if you decide I'm gonna do uh, one hour, something for one hour every evening, I have a student, it means every week or every two weeks they upload homework, they finish within eight months. 
However, unfortunately, a lot of students, they don't um, work, they don't start working in the first few months, and then the work pile up, and then they do first homework, second homework, and because it's very normal that you don't know what is expected from you, how much is enough. We try to explain you, but it's very, some people are much better in the written English. Some people struggle. They're not native speakers. And for that reason, very often first homework, second homework gets resubmitted because we ask you, please improve your references or add to this question. And a lot of students get disappointed because, uh, you know, they invested a few weeks in doing that homework and they say, now I have to add something. Why is this not good? But the, the goal is for you to improve. So you will see within a few months how much you will improve in your written work, how much will you improve in your knowledge, knowing how to research, how to re reference very well. And that's the goal. So that's our goal because we know we can, uh, you can become, you know, much better. Uh, so don't be discouraged. I always tell students, I expect your first and second homework to be maybe resubmitted and do it as fast as possible because then you're going to understand okay this is what they require from me and this is how much i have to write this is how i reference correctly so we try of course the trainers try to teach you from the beginning how to reference and do everything um uh, but of course there is always some maybe some kind of mistakes or you don't understand something clearly so don't be discouraged and like we said you will resubmit your work once it's good you will get mark four and we move forward um I, I don't know if you have any specific questions, but what I would say is that we try to give you feedback. It's always for you to improve. Um, I have a group of students that I train personally. I love when I do the whole course. I have a lot of students that I just assess, but those who I train, I push them to upload something every week, every two weeks. Um, and, you know, sometimes, and then I make like a panic for them. I tell them, uh, you know, why didn't they upload anything? Why didn't they upload anything? I bother them a little bit because I know in eight months they can finish. They can enjoy if they start in September, October. By June, my goal is for them to finish. And then they can apply for a better job. They can get better salaries, uh, improve. Uh, and that's my goal, to see uh, all of you grow and uh, become better. So uh, if you do you have any specific questions that we can answer for you? I'm just going to open. Madi, do we have a chat here? So if any. Yes, there is a chat um, option. So maybe you can just check and see if we have um, some questions. Anyone who wants to ask anything to the assessor, anything, you can ask us here or you can even um, just, just unmute your microphone and you can talk to us. Okay. I think everybody is okay. Yeah. Okay. We're here anyway. So if you have any questions, you can um, definitely chat with us and, and ask us questions. So it's a very interesting uh, course. It's a very interesting course, course where you will grow, you will learn a lot, you will improve a lot. So I hope you will, you, you will be part of it. Okay. We can resubmit. Yes, Shabana, you can definitely, yes, if you get a three, you're supposed to resubmit till you get a four, you just keep resubmitting and, um, and, and that's that. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Okay. Um, there was a time in January, you started a training, Ms. Novena started a training on um, SEND students, SEND code on accepting identification of um, children with special needs. And then she said that it's going to be once every month. Mm -hmm. And I discovered that we couldn't do it again. So I want to ask, when is the next one coming up? Yes, yeah, so we have one on 30th. We actually did have quite a few. We have one this month. We have one on 30th. Then again, we, so we have one every last Saturday of the month. With okay. This event. Yeah? Okay. So right. you can you can register for that uh, with us at any time, and I'll share the I'll share the details of that um, over here as well if you want. Yes, okay? we're gonna do we're gonna do a speech uh, speech delay this month. So I'm okay. gonna be going through some specific exercises that you can do with babies and young children, 
to strengthen okay. their muscles, why it's important, how we can do it, okay. some uh, techniques for stuttering that is also common uh, that can help children. And we're just going to go through like speech delay and language delay this month because it's a big need uh, as well in practice. Really enjoyed that. So we've been looking forward to the next one. Thank you. That's great. So okay. Much. All right. So I quickly just want to wrap up with um, with uh, with just the last part. I just want to tell you about not uh, not just about cash. I want to tell you generally about why it is so important for you guys to have a professional qualification, especially in these difficult times. As you know, like the world has completely flipped and it's, everything has changed immediately and we don't know what's going to happen next. Now when the market re reopens and restarts, really trust me, professionals will be given the first preference, uh, you know, because of these challenging economic situations. We need people who give results and who actually can do the work. So I really want you guys to use this time. You have a lot of time now at home. Please register yourself for programs, register yourselves for CPDs, you know, for qualifications you always wanted to do just so that you can, you know, have a good qualification to expand your skill set. You know, you learn something, you use this free time, you can gain more access. Like if you are a cash three already, then, you know, you have time and you are already eligible for another qualification because of cash level three, you can do level five now. So make sure you enter the ladder, you know, you start from somewhere. And obviously, it obviously broadens your career opportunities, improve your chances of career progression. And having a qualification, trust me, I, I, whenever I hire any trainer or any teachers, I look at their qualification, not because I think that makes them more intelligent, because I believe that doing a one year full intensive program and succeeding in the end, it shows a commitment. It shows, you know, a level of commitment and level of discipline that somebody has, you know, in their life. So we, people love working with such people and those, are, those people are always hired above else. So try your best to register yourself for courses. And obviously doing a cash program, it doesn't just mean that, you know, you will, you will be a part of MNR for just four months or one year and then you leave. You always stay in our database and we always keep inviting you for all our programs and future training and also because uh, MNR themselves has a lot of opportunities coming up so we have a school coming up as I told you and we have already decided that you know we will only be hiring students who, who graduate by us you know teachers who are looking for work and they have studied with us they will always and every time get the first preference so MNR really is like a small family and it's really really amazing to work uh, with them as well so it's not so small, Mad. It's very big, actually. Now it's very big, yes. Now it's very big. We have so many students now. So yeah. I wanted to tell you about this training. So we have one coming up on 20th of May. This is, it's, it's actually mainly for uh, somebody who's already studying the cash qualification. So it's a lot of, it will be in detail about how to undertake a longitudinal study for your cash level three and what, and we'll discuss a few theories and theorists. Okay. We'll talk about them. It will help you in your assignments if you are doing cash. Okay. And then we have one, we, this is our general prices that I wanted to share with you. Uh, I know some of you are looking for uh, to register for the program. So if you want to register, please feel free to contact uh, whoever you were speaking to, Rochelle, Saida, or Rupali, and they can help you. And I want to just quickly share with you the CPD poster as well. So if you just give me a minute, I'll, I'll share that as well with you. Yes, in the meantime, I just type in my name. My name is Nevena Bajalot. You can connect with me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Um, I'm a family and parenting coach as well. So I try to share a lot of information, answer questions. I do webinars. So you can share, connect with me, share your email. I can add you to my newsletter where I share different tips as well. So you're more than welcome to connect. Uh, we can stay in touch uh, as well. I've been in Dubai for several years worked in across different nurseries, consulting different nurseries. And very often uh, I have uh, people, you know, who are hiring, they're asking me, do you know some good teachers? Do you know good managers? So if you're looking for an opportunity, I would like obviously to be in touch with you. And if I know you're a good practitioner and you did your qualification, I'm more than happy to always recommend you and connect you with some people as well. 
Yes. Okay, so I just wanted to share with you the details of this, uh, the upcoming special education. I'm sorry, why does this always? Okay. So this, uh, this is the upcoming uh, CPD for special needs for speech delay. This is being, uh, this will be done by Miss Navena. Okay. So can you all, so you all can see, right? The CPD details. Yeah. Okay. So if you just want to save the number or anything whom you have to contact to register yourself, please do so. And um, I hope I'll see you at the CPD. So Ms. Navena is specialized in early years, uh, in uh, special education needs for early years. So this is really her forte. So it's really, really, uh, it's, she does these amazing sessions and webinars. And also she's a writer. Uh, she has written a book already and now she's she's told me she's already completed her second as well so i can't wait for that one to come out so she's written a book called nursery yes or no where she talks about the importance of early years and the nurseries and why parents should send their children to nursery and um i'm really excited for the second one as well so guys please can I interrupt you sorry can i interrupt you Nivana, yes. do you have this do you have this book online Yes, it's on Amazon. My book is on Amazon. Yes. And we can actually read it as well online? Uh, it's on Kindle and Amazon. However, oh. um, I don't know with Kindle in UAE, there is, a, you know, UAE is very specific with the law, with the books. Yeah. So um, it's on Kindle worldwide. I have people purchasing it in UAE on Kindle. Uh, it's not available. It's just showing them UAE. It's not available. It is avail It was available, of course, to buy it if you all you are in UAE uh, to purchase the hard copy of the book. Now, due to uh, coronavirus, the Amazon informed me they don't ship books at the moment no. because it's not priority. No. So no. I do have books with me. If you really want to buy the book, I have hard copy. I would love to sign for yes. you as well. And um, we, we do usually when we do trainings in person, I bring books with me and I'm super excited. My second book, it's about parenting, emotional struggles, parents go through how to overcome the guilt, the fear, the worries, how to build harmonious family. And um, I'm just working with some publisher and, and, and finishing with editing and everything. So soon the second book should be available as well. Yes. And okay, uh, you. you were asking, you can follow Miss Navena even on YouTube. Uh, she has a channel on YouTube as well. So you can definitely follow her over there. And um, anything else, guys, you want to ask us about? Yeah, I want to ask another question. Sorry, I'm asking you so many. Oh, um, obviously, obviously, you know, I've been working with children for a long time. Um, is there anything, I'm going to mention the word free again, but is there any training that you could give us for special need children? Because we have a lot in the nursery that I work for. Okay, so you want to free training? If there's anything you could do, yes, please. Okay. I know ADHD, I know ADD, I know dyslexia. I know, I, but I know it's a, it's a huge, wide, wide yes. spectrum of of children with different is needs. Is there any specific topic that you are looking for? Any Autism. Specific? Autism. Autism. Yes, we yeah. do have one coming up with Miss Navena. We do have one coming up. We did put a small fee uh, for a few reasons. Uh, first of all, we do have some expenses to cover, obviously. Um, and I believe that when you pay, you pay attention. So when it's a free training, it, it's true. Whenever I paid, I put more value. I took it more seriously. I showed up whenever now so many people are giving free, free trainings, but you know, when you pay for the gym, you go to the gym. When you have a free gym in your building, sure. nobody's doing it. So, and, and we really want to put some value to try to give you, um, I'm going to prepare as much as possible, even maybe to share with you different tests different things that you can do and some practical advices and it has a huge value. So I spent years studying and researching and we really put like a minimum entry fee that you can get the certificate. We can print certificate for you and um, it's just for you to show up. So, so you, know, you know why like we put like a fee for this is only because we give you some material for you to take take back with you and then you actually, you know, implement it in your nursery and you, it's like a new tool that you gain. It's like a new thing that you bought. 
So it's it's, yeah. uh, it's fine, you know, like there there is um, a fee. But um, but then but when you say the fee, sorry, I'm interrupting you. But when you say the fee, how much is the fee? Bearing in mind, the whole of the nurseries are all on unpaid leave. Yes, so I know. Nothing, I know. You know? So for, <laughs> for the special needs program, we've kept it at 100. Uh, that's the, really the minimum that we could go. But for the other CPDs, we've kept it just 50. Uh, and uh, those are also just, uh, it's just optional. If you want the certificate, you pay 50. Otherwise, that's also free, of course. It's just a special needs is... Uh, Hundred because a lot of time and effort goes into preparing for those, and um, we have, uh, you know, Miss Nevena she'll be speaking, and we also use some external resources that we buy to give you guys, you know, in the training. That's why the fee is there. But um, we've tried our best to keep it as less as possible. But do stay tuned. Uh, it's not just these. We do keep doing more CPDs, and in that, if ever, you know. Uh, special needs comes up in the 50s CPD that we do. So maybe you can attend those as well. Yeah. But you really, can you know, please, uh, can, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, yeah. Can you please update us whenever the CPDs are there? Because, you know, with this busy, busy schedule and like, yes. we, we sometimes like it, it's out of our mind, like we have to do that. So if you can send us a reminder by any yeah. emails or if you can no, let us know. What, now, what that are the the are now that you all have already now come to this meeting and so already your emails are in our database now. So what we do is whenever we have a CPD, we just like bulk email the whole database that we have. Anybody interested, they can respond to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, I was going to ask you the same question, okay. but she beat me to it. It's fine. Okay. All right. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Lovely speaking to everyone, guys. Thank you so much for taking out your time. And I Thank hope you. I asked uh, your questions and gave you some clear picture of cash and the programs just to help you to make your decisions and i really hope to see some of you guys in the upcoming uh, batches or in the cpds wherever or just you know to be in touch for sure yeah yeah i would look forward to go for a cpd first and let's see how hopefully for the best that's great that's okay great. Then. keep okay. us updating about the cpds and we'll yeah. definitely be the part of mnr Inshallah. 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 Okay, dear. Thank you, guys. Okay, Thank bye, bye. Okay, bye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your help. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, bye. Hello, ma'am. I have a question. Yes, tell me. Uh, I'm Shahana. Uh, I'm. Uh, I have done master in science education. Uh, okay. I have done it from my home country, and uh, now I am doing cash level two uh, from your. Uh, uh, Sharjah branch. Okay. And now uh, it's uh, up to uh, end. And uh, can you suggest me what uh, what type of uh, uh, future uh, professional course I did admission admission and uh, uh, which is beneficial for me for future job? Can you okay, suggest? So, yes. Yeah. So if you want to stay in this profession for early years and you want to grow in this, then you should definitely do cash level three. After level okay. two, that is the logical, uh, you know, pathway. So you should do cash level three. And then if you really want to get into the management side, then you should do cash level five for sure. Okay. If okay. I just wanted to uh, do in a high level, a primary level uh, teaching job, then which course uh, I can, uh, can take admission? High level as in which, which grade would you want to do? Um, uh, up to sixth grade. Sixth grade. Okay, so that is not uh, for cash. That is, you will need to do PG, PGCIE, that degree. So that is for uh, secondary teacher and uh, for like school teachers, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you have to do that qualification, not cash. Yeah. So let me just uh, tell you the full name. Um, Just a second. Okay, so that is a PG CE training course. Okay, so that is the it's like a post graduation course. 
okay um and that is that that is what will get you jobs in ua if you want to become a okay. teacher for grade it's a one year one year course it Do is a one it is a one year yes one year course yes okay. yes thank you so much okay thank you all right Okay, guys, thank you so much for joining. I'm going to um, close the session. Yeah. All right. And I hope to see you all soon. Thank you. Okay, bye. Thank you very much. Thank you.